Good morning, Mikael. Hi, good morning. Um, big game against Sevilla. Potentially, you could qualify for the knockout stages. Could you just give us early team news, particularly your captain, Martin Odegaard, and, and Gabriel Jesus, who's just been called up to the Brazil squad? Yeah, Gabi won't be fit uh, with Martin. Is it still uncertain? Um, the rest, uh, no news so far. Mikel, it's been a few days since what happened happened at Newcastle United. You, you were very emotional, clearly emotional after after the game. When you reflect on what you said and the club putting out that statement the day after as well, when you when you reflect, would you have done anything differently? <laughs> It is my duty to stand uh, in front of you, to stand in front of the cameras and give a very clear and honest assessment of what happens on the game. And this is what I did, reflect very openly um, how I felt that the team played and, um, and how the game was conditioned by these results with the decisions that were made. And um, it's the duty. My duty is to be defending my players, supporting my players, supporting my club, defending my people in the best possible way, and this is what I'm going to do time after time. And I do it not the way I feel, with the evidence and being as clear as possible. And I always do it. When we play really need to say that, when we have lost, to take my responsibility, the first one, me, to do it. And um, it's the way that I am and I have to defend my club. Having said that, I mean, I've never seen you react like that. I don't think many people have. Such was your emotion after the game. Was your emotion and your anger simply to do with that goal or was it maybe a build-up of, of other decisions that you may feel have gone against you? And if so, will you be taking this up with the PGMOL? Yeah, something, things, they, they don't happen overnight, you know, and, um, and when I was that clear and, and when I had all the evidence to stand for the words that, um, that I use in the, in the media, it's because I feel strongly about them. Uh, one thing I say externally, then as well internally to my players, is how can we play better, how can we be more dominant, how we can do the game the way we want, so giving no chance to the opponents. But one thing is my duty towards you guys, and then my duty as a coach to do what we have to do. And this is exactly what I've done. Nothing special, nothing different, and I would do it, and the club would do it again and again, till this is right, and till this is right as well in what we have to do on the pitch, to play better and win more football games, that's it. Just a final one for me, Mikael, just specifically on that goal, because you were asked in the post-match interview and in the news conference about why you think it was disallowed, and you said there was a series of events. There were three VAR checks. Can you give us a little bit more clarity now, having reflected in the last few days, why you think that goal should have been disallowed? Was there one particular incident? Now we talk about Seville and the beautiful game that we have to play tomorrow. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. Going to Ian from TalkSport. Um, talking about the Seville game tomorrow, how important is it that you get a win and you get through as quickly as possible with games to spare so you can maybe rest a few The moment you have a chance in football uh, to put it to bed, do it. Uh, we're going to have to do a lot of things right tomorrow and then the right to win it uh, against a really good team with enormous um, experience in this competition. And uh, we have to prove it tomorrow in front of our people, how excited we are to play that game and what it means for us. I don't know if you saw last night's game. Spurs, yes. Chelsea. After a zone, Postecoglou said that referees, their decision used to be was it's final. And he grew up. That was what he was taught. The referees' decision is final. And you, you said about a month ago that mistakes happen. You need to understand that mistakes happen. Um, what, what is your relation to that statement you made a month ago after what happened on Saturday? I stand for the same words, that mistakes are part of, of football in any other way. And we are here to constructively improve the game in everything that we can. And this is what we have been doing. As a club, me individual with my duty as a manager in the manager's meeting, to give our opinion, our voices, and to raise it in the most constructive ways to get a, a better game. That's all. That's the only thing that we are looking, I think, collectively to achieve everybody. That's it. Uh, we spoke in a press conference on Fridays about your passion on the, on the touchline you were mentioning a couple of weeks ago you've already got three red three yellow cards and two more and you end up getting a suspension um, in, in terms of that how does this help your control of your behaviour on the sidelines when you know that or you understand that sometimes there will be a VAR check that goes against you that is the answer your colleague just mentioned how emotional I was after the game and how I acted on the touchline I didn't get a yellow I didn't get a warning from the referee 
So I stay focused on the game, trying to affect the game in the best possible way for my players. That's it. Thanks, Ian. We'll go to Aralas from TV2 Norway. Hi, Mikael. Uh, Martin has just been called up for Norway, uh, who played two, um, what do you say, games that don't really count for them. Um, mm. What would be your message to, to the Norway manager regarding his situation, injury situation with Gertz? Nothing. Yeah. Martin loves to play for his country, and every time that he's been called up and, and he was fit, um, he's been there, and, uh, and he will be there if that's the case. You played 10 minutes against West Ham, so some people were a bit surprised with the timing because you were 3-0 down and then you didn't play in the weekend. What, what was the thinking behind that? Yeah, but nothing is no relation with what he had and, and, and what happened the day before the game against um, against Newcastle. There are two different topics and things. Okay, we'll go to Alex from the BBC. Hi, Mikel. Hi. Uh, with what happened at the weekend, can you use it to galvanise the players going into the game tomorrow night? What's the feeling in the group? Yes, especially the performance of the team and watching back the two games that we played last year when we won 0-2 and the one that we lost 1-0, we were much better <laughs> three days ago than a year ago, but much, much better. We deserve much more than in that game, but this is the beauty of this game. So we have to build a lot of things that we did right against Newcastle, improve certain things, especially in the final third, to be more a threat, but for the rest, the, the way the team played, the way he competed, it was extraordinary. And can I just ask you, what have you made of the reaction to the, the club's statement since it's come out? People like Gary Neville have said it's dangerous for the club to release a statement like that. Again, we have a duty to express how we feel with all the evidence that we have and the history of what happened. And uh, I think we have to really stand for our people, our values and who we are. And when the club is done it, it's done it in very specific moment for the right reasons and it shows as well the unity and the understanding that um, there is within the club um, to position ourselves in a really clear and honest way. And I think that's our duty as a club. Mark from the Press Association. Hi, Mikael. Just on that, obviously, you, you weren't the first, you definitely won't be the last manager to, to criticise a, a referee's performance after a game. But Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> when, when, when the club do make the statement, yeah. does that not, sometimes, especially a club the size of Arsenal, does it not sometimes legitimise no, I think the support that we have given to to everybody and I continue to that's not gonna change, you know. And I'm gonna be there. I have to talk to anywhere, I will be in any meeting and trying to reinforce everything. We all want the same, that this is not the topic, you know, we all want the same, but we have to understand that we have to be there. And if you guys and everybody wants in football that we are there and we get our opinion, we have to give our opinion in an honest way and clear. Don't talk about other things. Be clear and honest. Very respectful, but clean and honest. And value what we have and make sure that we continue evolving the game the way we want. That's it. I suppose it's quite a hard, hard answer, but how do you evolve the game? How, does, how do we stop these errors happening? But errors are part of an evolution. You know, the trajectory is never going to be like this. There are always bumps around the road, and maybe these, are, these things are very necessary to happen to improve the game in the right way, you know, and that's it. But then, but we have to talk loudly. You have a problem, and you put it there in your draw. The problem is in the draw, and it's going to stink at some moment, you know. If we have a problem, let's talk about it. Let's try to improve it, and let's try to, in, the, in a very constructive way, try to improve it. That's it. That's what we are trying to do. Nothing else, guys. Okay, we'll go to the last couple in the live section. First, Davide from Gazeta della Sport. Hi, Mikael. Um, I was wondering if you're happy with the way you guys have been playing in Europe this season, considering how long you, you have not been in Champions League and how much you put uh, you know, emphasis on Champions League. Yes, I think so. Obviously, we had two very good games, and the one in Lens, especially the second half that we're struggling in the first 20, 25 minutes of the second half. But overall, yes. And as well, the team, the way the team has... Um, not only perform, but I think the presence of the team, you know, the maturity that they have shown in, in big games like this, has been, it's been really good. And it's about doing it consistently, and tomorrow we're going to have to do a lot of those things um, very, very well. Uh, I have a question about Jorginho. Yeah. You have been playing a lot lately. What did you see from him, and why uh, he's been so important for you guys? Well, hopefully the same that all the managers that have played and uh, and, has, <laughs> and has won European Championship and Champions League, that is an incredible player, is a is a leader, is a very intelligent player for us, and um, and he has the quality to make the team better. That's it. Okay. Finally, the live section with Art from the Athletic. Hi, Michael. So Hi. Just on the referee stuff, I was wondering 
when everyone has the same, I guess, objective to evolve the game, does that kind of get undermined sometimes by the discussion being messed up with tribalism? Um, people only feeling that that they should speak when it goes against them, for instance. No, because I think I have defended many, many situations. And, and this is, and the last thing, you have never heard in a press conference use an excuse to, to talk about that result. This is nothing to do about it. It's first of all, look inside the house, all the things that we can do better. And then we can talk externally, okay, is there anything that can affect what we are actually doing? But first look inside and I'm the first one to look in the mirror.